Welcome back to Hannity Time for Media Mash, our weekly roundup of all the ways the mainstream media put their liberal spin on the news. And this week, by the way, they've been twisting themselves into knots trying to cover for the administration's disastrous Obamacare rollout. And back this week to go through all the material that never ends, president of the Media Research Center, Brother Brent Bozell, sir. Welcome, Brother Hannity. Welcome back, sir. How are we tonight? All right. Isn't let's this fun? I, I'm, I'm, I'm finally enjoying myself a little bit here. <laughs> yeah. Well, I, you almost can't make this up. I mean, we've pointed out for years that certain news outlets are basically an extension of the Obama press office. But well, let's start with NBC saying that conservatives, now they didn't make the problem if you like your plan, keep your plan, like your doctor, keep your doctor, $2,500 per family per year savings. No, the president did. But they're saying no conservatives need to apologize. That's how blank backwards they have it. Let's watch. The facts are that many of the same people that feel betrayed now will be thanking the president later. These are people in so-called junk plans that could bankrupt them and their families if they ever got sick. The apology should be coming from the conservatives. The conservatives should be apologizing for having no plan and no option for any of the people that you've just seen illustrated on this program. And they should be apologizing to the 50 million Americans who have been without insurance because, damn it, they've been sick. On the health care, instead of playing frickin' defense, how about you go after the Republicans who have 40 million people they want to commit to the emergency room? They don't want to lift a finger right. for them, and the so-called independent media out there never brings it up. Mo, Larry, and Curly, and they've never read the CBO <laughs> report that says even with Obamacare, 30 million Americans will still not have insurance. You know, just, just close your eyes and listen to the tone. This is sheer panic coming from these people. But also, Sean, think about the condescension. When you f find the insurance policy that's best for you, for your wife, for your children, they call it a junk plan if it doesn't fit their narrative. They make these statements up that there are 15 million people, 50 million people that don't have insurance. It's not true. They make the statement up that Republicans want to put 40 million people into hospitals, into emergency rooms. This is sheer panic. Yeah, well, it's like, fun. it's like they're blaming the insurance companies, just like they blame conservatives, they blame Fox, and when all else fails, George Bush is going to be responsible for Obama's lies next. All right, wh let's watch NBC and CNN again, th how they step over themselves, making excuses for the president's lies on, on the five million Americans and going higher that got cancellation letters. This is a bit like someone saying, uh, I'm going to sell you a $500 car, and then that pesky government says this car has to be roadworthy. The number one cause of bankruptcy in the United States is, is medical bills, and a large part of that is because there are really bad plans out there. I mean, I think this is a little bit of a red herring, and if you look at the numbers, this is a relatively small percentage of the population that we're talking about that fits into this, this idea that they, they have plans, they want to keep them uh, because they're buying insurance already on the individual market, but that we have regulations for, for cars that are unsafe. People say, I want to keep my pin I don't want to be forced to buy a Ferrari. They just rationalize the president's main promises when he was selling this piece of garbage. How? I, I don't. Yeah, I mean, uh, did this is spin that, no, this is the kind of spin that would make Baghdad Bob blush. <laughs> it, it, look, you know, what they're, they're saying, and, and, and again, the, the insulting nature of it, the insurance policy you bought for your family is a pinto. It's a piece yeah. of crap in their mind's eye. I like eye. a pinto. And President Obama was doing the right thing by canceling it. You said I could keep my pinto. Let me keep my pinto if you like a pinto. All right, let's go. Now, this gets even more interesting. Matt Lauer really, really hopes American people that they're going to forgive Obama for all his lying and broken promises. It's touching. He okay. apologized for the fact that he made a promise during the rollout, during the campaign for many, health. Many, many, many promises. Made it over and over again, said you get to keep your existing policy. If you like it, 5% of Americans can't keep it because it doesn't meet the standards of the new health care law. If it turns out, Governor, that they end up, those 5% of people, with a better health insurance policy, do you think they'll forgive him for the broken promise? It's not 5%. Everybody is regurgitating the 5% Obama latest lie. That is not true either, but go ahead. 
You know, our parents taught us that ends never justify the means. Even if it were true, it doesn't justify lying to the American people. But what is it that's getting better? Premiums are going up 42% in California. They're going up 70% in Texas, 90% in Illinois. There's nothing better about this monstrosity. Everyone knows it. Anyone, I invite people in the press, continue defending the indefensible because everyone now sees where you're coming from. All right, let's show how insane our good friend Chris Matthews is getting these days. He's, he, he wants to fault Republicans, these right-wingers that are actually asking that the president of the United States be honest, faithful to his word, truthful, honorable. Watch how he goes off here. The right wing of this country has been a big part of the Republican coalition, and not once does Boehner or McConnell ever stood up and said, those people are unacceptable in the way that Bill Buckley in the 1950s said, anti-Semitism is not allowed in the American conservative coalition. Nobody says it. Nobody stands up from the middle right and says, we ain't part of your crowd. You're not part of ours. I look at the free ride the media has been given the Republican Party. They get away. These birthers are, are treated as just Southern, usually out of it people. Gomer, he's just a yeah. joke. He doesn't matter. And yet the right wing of their party, a quarter of them, a third of them, haters of Obama because of his background. Yeah. Haters. When is the when are, when are Nancy Pelosi and Harry Reid going to go after him? All the times he he <laughs> accuses anyone that dares to disagree with his beloved president, who gives him Obama gasms uh, of being racist. General Sean Hannity, uh, Chris Matthews uh, lecturing the Republican Party on how to behave is kind of like Brent Bozell lecturing LeBron James on the finer points of basketball. <laughs> yeah, uh, good point. You know, the, <laughs> and for for him to evoke. William F. Buckley, what he is doing is saying that the Republican Party needs to throw out the beliefs of William F. Buckley. All right, Brent Pozell, thank you for being with us. Appreciate it. Thanks, John. All right, well